Utakubaliana na mimi kwa sasa ukiweza kutazama katika vyombo vya habari na mitandao ya kijamii. Ni kana kwamba kisa na kisi iliyokuwa ikimhusisha Joey Rongo imekuwa hikipoa moto wake. Hila, kuna watu ambao wajakuwa kilala wakifanya uchunguzi na kuweza kudhibitisha swani ukweli Joey Rongo alikuwa na hatia ya mauaji yake Monica Kimani ama kilikuwa tu ni kisa na kisanga ambacho kilipangwa ndipo kuweza kumweka Joey Hirongo tabani na kuweza kumuhukumu kwa jambo ambalo hakulifanya. Bloga Cyprian Nyakondi kupitia sources za kwake ameweza kufumbua taarifa jipi ambazo zimeweza kuweza kuanika kisa hiki chote kizima kwa upana na urefu na ndio maana jina lake Joe Wirongo kwa mara nyingine likiwa ni jina ambalo limeongelewa sana mwaka 2023 limeweza kupanda kileleni kwa majina ambayo yanaongelewa sana katika mtandao wa Twitter ukipenda X Now as of right now tumekuwa na maswali mengi ya so what was the motive of Joey Irongo to kill Monica Kimani tumekuwa na maswali yao ya kujiuliza kila kukicha na je mashahidi ambao walijitokeza katika kesi waliweza kudhibitisha haja Joey Irongo ndiye ambaye so aliweza kumua Monica Kimani hata ingawa kulikuwa na ushahidi ya kwamba it was not one person ambaye alihusika katika mauaji yale ya Monica Kimani Kando na hilo kulingana na taarifa ambazo ziliweza kupokezwa kwa maafisa wa polisi waliokuwa kipeleleza kisiki ilithibitishwe ya kwamba Joey Irongo's DNA haikuwepo at the scene of the crime so how comes Joey Irongo was convicted of this murder now we want to look at the evidence and the witnesses on every aspect kulingana na chapisho hili la Sipra Nyakundi ambalo ni chapisho limepanda kileleni kwa mambo ambayo yanayozungumziwa sana katika mitandao ya kijamii. E, na niteza kuanza kwa sababu e, e, alipata kuandika masaa kumi na tisa iliyopita Sipra Nyakundi saying don't sleep the Joey case analysis is coming up shortly and this where it all began. Now part one peculiar aspect in the Joseph Jovi Irongo case an analysis by a crime enthusiast someone conducted a comprehensive analysis of the Jovi Irongo case Jovi was convicted and sentenced to death by Lady Justice Grace and Zioka for the murder of businesswoman Monica Kimani the court the court found out that the murder was intentional and premeditated Despite this plea for custodial sentence rather than the death penalty the court uh, the court upheld the sentence due to the gravity of the crime This analysis points out a peculiar aspect of the case that may interest you and I believe it's worth sharing with the public as received for their insights and comments Since it's a lengthy document I plan to break it down into a series of posts for earlier consumption Number 1 the DNA Let us look at what the report says say about DNA and samples taken from the scene of the crime and from the uh, accused. Our reliable sources state that only Brian Kasaina, the first and second accused whose DNA samples were taken, the samples form are supposed to be signed by a doctor, the investigating officer, and number three, the suspects. However, In the papers presented to court Mr Irongo's DNA sample report was not signed by any of the above. We are curious to know why the forms presented in court were not complete. Still on the DNA issue, the government pathologist told the court he received 73 exhibits from the police as well as DNA samples and swabs from several people. Exhibits included chair, uh, chair clothes, uh, open shoes, a blunt stained towel, a sensitive tape, a knife, a wine glass, empty beer, empty beer can and empty beer bottles. However, reports indicate that there were two friends of the deceased, Mr. Lee Owen Omondi and Mr. Da Dabul Walid, who identified Mr. Irongo as the last, the last person they left at the apartment. The common thing would have been to have their DNA swabs taken too to rule them out from being suspects but 
our sources indicate that no DNA samples were taken from the two said men. So what was used to rule them out as suspects? If they were at the point at the scene of crime, what criteria was used to move them from being suspects to witnesses? No DNA samples were taken. So basically the police used their word of mouth to rule them out as suspects. Police reports dragged two more unidentified people to the scene of the crime through their DNA swab. Uh, through their DNA swab, I mean. We would like the police to explain to the general public why those samples were not taken. Who are the other unknown and unidentified males whose DNA was found on the beer cans and the white straps used to tie her hands? Government analyst Joseph Kimani told the court that the straps which form part of the exhibit he was required to profile did not link Mr. Irongo to them in any way. So who, whose was it? Reports indicate that Monica Kimani was apparently, uh, uh, she was used before being brutally killed. On the 4th and 5th October 2018, the Standard newspaper reported that a DNA test of semen found in Monica's pan matched Irongo's by 99%, therefore placed him at the center of the crime scene. Please note that the DNA sample forms presented in court state that the DNA samples of the first and the second accused were taken on this very 5th of October at 18.10 hours. So how did the police then issue a statement on the issue to the standard newspaper without having taken the samples first? Now listen to this. From our investigative desk, it has been made known to us that the post-mortem report presented in court had no way of mentioning that there were signs of uh, Monica Kemani akitumika ama tuseme ile ni jina ambalo sipendi kulitumia vibaya kudhulumiwa neither is there any document presented in court indicating the same who gave out this information remember this is the only one time all samples taken in the Lamuria Gardens apartment are said to have matched Mr. Irongo's DNA. Where are these results indicating a 99% ma uh, match and why were they never presented in court? Please see screenshots of the postmortem results below. Still, on the DNA issue, the investigating officer revealed that test by the government chemist in a report reference A. 199-2018 dated December 13th, 2018 confirmed that DNA profile generated from the shorts Mr. Irong wore on the day of the murder matched that generated from Monica's blood sample. Apparently, the investigating officers found it appropriate to cut the area in which the, the, the stain of blood was in order to take it to the lab for further analysis. They, however, cut both sides of the khaki shorts, insinuating that the blood stains had penetrated through the leg and onto the other side of the shorts. Something that is literally impossible. End of part one. Now, Ili Nichapisho La Kwanza, remember this is a very long coast. Itakuwa video refu kama utakuwa kifuatilia. So, this is just the part one. Now, we have been looking at the DNA samples. Now, on number two, reports indicate that some, detail, that some details police scooped from Mr. Irongo's phone conversation showed that he arranged and picked Monica Kimani from the airport and dropped her to the Akilimani Estate House after jetting in from South, South Sudan. On the other hand, other reports indicate that she was picked up by a taxi whose driver has since written a statement on the same. To settle this, this matter once and for all, we believe that, that JKIA have CCTV cameras placed in all corners and they would be able to show us and his movement if at all any in and out of the airport. No CCTV footage of Mr. Irongo picking up from the airport has been produced. Target ticket records show, should have shown that he was there or the said vehicle KCA-031E issued a ticket. There is footage of her when she arrived at the airport and as she exited, 
this footage hasn't been provided in court. The only thing produced in court is some photos extracted from the footage. Still on the CCTV issue, it is also very strange that it happens that the Lamoria Gardens apartment CCTV cameras were not working on the particular day since no footage was presented in, in court. Even so, the apartment block is surrounded by guest houses or apartments whose CCTV cameras could capture the happenings of the said night or at least at the entrance on the said night unless they were all coincidentally not working on the said night too. Nothing of the sort has been presented in court to prove beyond reasonable doubt that indeed Mr. Irongo was there. The investigating officer said this in court, and I quote, My team did not ask security guns about CCTV footage of events at Monica, at Monica, at Monica's house because they were only interested in securing the murder scene. Uh, really? Really? According to the defense side, Mr. Irongo is said to have been waiting for Ms. Maribe at Rodhouse Grill Restaurant along Dennis Print Road as it was the norm of for him the norm for him to pick her to pick her after reading the 9 p.m. news. It is said that Ms. Maribe asked him to meet him at Club 4040 instead. Mpesa statement paid at the said establishment can prove that he was there. CCTV footage from the two places, even though this was not presented in court, can show that what time he was there and the time he left. Nothing from these places have been presented in court, even though the interviewed persons from the said clubs confirmed indeed Mr. Irongo was there at the said times. We continue. Remember, this is the part two of the story. And as I said, it's a long story, which all of us are looking at. From every aspect, remember, this man was found guilty of murder, and he was sentenced to death. So why at any moment should we leave out any details of Joey Rongo being linked to the murder of Monica Kimani? Now, on number three, the call logs. I have obtained the call logs of the deceased and of the first accused between 18th and 21st September 2018. The logs as shown below can clearly show that there is no time the two had any communication between them. No calls, no SMS, no nothing. This is the official report from Safaricom. A phone number then was 0715 77 58 56, while his was 077 where did the reports that the two and talk to each other come from did did the media cook stories up or what they fed with cooked stories and as usual did not bother to counter check still on matter on matters call according to the deceased brother brother statement he tried calling his sister's phone in the night and in the morning but it went unanswered the phone went off at around 11.37 a.m. Following, the following day. Reports indicate that two of her phones had been immersed in the bathtub. If the phones were in the water, there is no either way of them would have been still on the following day while immersed in water, not even hours after the alleged time of, mur of murder. It is said that waterproof phones can stay underwater for a limited period, usually this time, ranges from 5 to 30 minutes. From the call logs below, we can see that the last communication she made was an SMS sent to 2519 and another before, uh, and another before sent to 0722549005, which was responded to at 2320. A number also received some calls up until 10.28 the following day, even though the calls went unanswered. Can a phone survive in water for more than 12 hours? Thereafter, you can see the phone went dead completely as the IMEI phone model did not register anymore as per the call logs below. So, if the murder took place the night of the 9th, how could the phone which has been immersed in water still be operational hours later. Here, as you can see, 
we shall be posting this. Yeah, these are the call logs from Monica Kimani's phone number. Now continuing, heading to story uh, to to part part four of this story. Witnesses, or number four. According to our sources, one of the witnesses is the watchman on duty at Lamoria Gardens apartment on the 9th of September 2018. According to him, the policy of the apartment indicates that for someone to access the apartment, they need to call the residents to say who oh, the visitor was and thereafter they would take the said visit visitor's detail before letting them in. However, in the in is uh, in is the watchman typed statement it indicates that he said he was under instructions from the deceased not to take records of the other gentlemen but one hence the names of the other visitors were missing the said witnesses in the victim's apartment names were not in the visitors of Karen's book in his written statement mr lee owen omondi who is seen to be one of the friends at monica's apartment says he left the apartment at 10 40 pm leaving mr irongo there however on the visitors occurrence book presented in court the id card belonging belonging to one dominic bisela allegedly used by mr irongo to access the apartments is registered to have arrived at lamoria gardens at two um, 23 23 21 and left at 23 31 10 minutes so can you tell me that 10 minutes was enough for mr irongo to drive to the scene and do what he is said to have done but apart from that also we want to look at this guy this guy says uh, uh, mr lee owen omondi says he left the apartment at 10 40 pm and he leaving Mr. Irongo there. Remember, Mr. Irongo arrived about 30 minutes, uh, uh, not 30, 50 minutes later after Mr. Lee left. So it is either Mr. Omond was also coerced into telling the made up narrative and was never in the house to begin with, since his name is not on the occurrence book. Either Mr. Irongo was never there, hence the missing CCTV footage or someone somewhere is playing us all big time. Now, see the images taken from the occurrence book below as well as except from Mr. Omondi's written statement. Yeah, this also, oh, we are placing it on this video. You can see it. Police case number yeah, 1030, and, uh, 10, uh, 1030 p.m. And yeah, 1040 p.m. There you can see the details will be on this video. Now, going forward remember this is number four or uh, the the, uh, the part four of the story heading to number five and number five joey shooting himself maribia's nanny mysteriously dying in terry in terry hands in terry Han chebet's house still on the witnesses issue according to the documents sent to our news desk uh, to our desk there are some contradicting statements from the initial written statement from the witnesses and the typed ones in court. Case in point is the then Jackie Maribe's house girl, Miss Pamela Kembo, and Brian Casainez on matters surrounding the night that Mr. Irongo allegedly shot himself. According to Pamela, she never had any gunshots. We have established that a statement did not match the expected narrative. So if Mr. Irongo shot himself in the house as said, then obviously Pamela would have had the gunshot, according to Kasaine. Before rushing Mr. Irongo to the hospital, he went upstairs and I quote, I went upstairs and found a trail of blood that led to the master bedroom. I entered the bedroom and saw a pool of blood on the, on the walk-in closet. I saw bullets scattered on the floor and a fire. I picked up the fire and I, I identified it to be mine. I picked also the bullets neatly arranged on the floor. There was also a spent cartridge. So he picked them up and went back to where Irong was lying and then they left for the hospital. However, Miss Kembo said that they had left for the hospital. She went upstairs and found the pistol on the floor. So which firearm did Brian pick? This also doesn't add up. 
he was not able to answer to these allegations during the recent hearing held on the 29th September 2021, claiming that he was feeling confused, nauseous, and could not remember any, everything. He at some point asked for break to think during the hearing. Oh, and just as a by the way, the said Miss Kembo, Maribes Nani is reported to have died mysteriously in the house of media personality Terry Han Chabet, her then employer at the time of her death. Coincidence? We don't know. Now, see below the contradicting, the contradicting statements, as you can hear them. I want you to listen to them carefully. On the issue of the accused having shot himself, the same has not been charged with the offense or with having illegal people. On 25th October 2021, the doctor's representative was unable to prove in court that indeed Mr. Irongo had shot himself. The wood is said to have been bigger at the front and smaller on the back from an, an, expert, pers an, expert, an expert pers perspective, I mean. Gunshot wounds can produce two types of wounds depending on the direction of travel of the project projectile. These are entry wounds and exit wounds. Entry wounds are generally smaller and more regular than exit wounds. So if at, in, at all he shot himself, he must have shot himself from the back according to the wood. We need to mention that the doctor, would, who, the doctor who could have testified to prove this also died mysteriously and therefore the hospital sent a representative coincidence we don't think so can you hear that it, I, the doctor who was supposed to testify that mr irongo did not shoot himself and that he was shot from the back also died and was not in court to prove that now this story has had several aspects this story has had different aspects. Now, on number six, we are heading to part number six. The Directorate of Criminal, uh, the Directorate of Command, Control and Communication, IC3 Center. The overall aim of the IC3 is to improve the National Police Service operational efficiency by deploying new hardware using up-to-date technology that is that will enable the police to adopt more efficient working practices and new operating concepts the ic3 operations integrate the command control and communication functions one of these functions is the automatic number plate recognition anpr control systems to control all anpr equipment and archiving retrieving recognized license plates According to reports, images of the car Mr. Irongo was driving on the said dates, KCA 031E, that were captured by police cameras on the road from Dennis Preet Road to his residence in Langata, showed that the driver was in the company of another man. The same report is also supposed to show Mr. Irongo's movement from the day of the murder up until 21st September 2018. I see three trajectory movement of KCA 031E show very well the incoming of Mr. Irongo from their residence home in Langat. However, on the same date of the murder incident, referring to a witness Mr. Lee Omondi, already testified that in his interaction with Mr. Irongo at Monica's apartment, Irongo had mentioned that he resigns in his Lee. The prosecution has tried to match this statement by trying to manipulate the IC3 images. Some of the images that have reached our desk are shocking. We need to mention that before an arrest is made, the investigative officer needs to have collected all the evidence needed for prosecution. This means the images we have are the ones that were presented in court as evidence of Mr. Irongo's movement on the said dates. On 26th October 2021, the prosecution stated in court that they had made a mistake and wanted to be allowed to file new images after realizing their manipulation had been noted by the defense team. The judge rejected this appeal. The mainstream media will never report this. Below is the true copy 
of the original certificate that indicates that the IC3 report was received and signed by the relevant authorities. Now, this case continues to get deep and deeper. Remember, we are on part five of this, and Kenyans are going crazy. Kenyans are going crazy on this. Kenyans are going crazy on this. Kenyans are trying to understand what really happened on the night of Monica Kemani's murder because it seems the information and the witnesses and the evidence all seems to be sh uh, some shoddy work that was done by the investigative officers which led them to capturing and prosecuting Joey Rongo for a claimed murder which the evidence not, does not match up to the execution. Now, on number seven, final peculiar aspect in the uh, jo Joseph Joey Irongo case, who owns KCF 031E. These images show very well Irongo and Maribe reaching the Alangata residence after coming from Club 4040. There are some fixed movements said to have been done by Irongo from Gonya, Gonya, Wagakonya, roundabout, around Karyoko Market, easily. This insinuates that after getting home, Mr. Irongo left and headed to his sleep. Furthermore, the vehicle which has been placed at this Ngonya Wagakonya roundabout towards Karyoko Market. Uh, uh, furthermore, the, the vehicle which has been placed at this Ngonya Wagakonya roundabout towards Karyoko Market is actually a KCF 031E, a smaller car, a different make, black in color, different bumper design with yellow and red reflector stickers, which is totally different from the KCA 031E, which is bigger, of a different make, gray in color and different bumper design. Whose car is KCF 031E? What, in, what is his involvement in this case? This is a clear indication that the IC3, which is under the office of the Inspector General and has been provided by the military of the Minister of ICT, has allowed the prosecution to manipulate and place a suspect somewhere. He was not just in order to fix the charges put upon him and infringe the judiciary system of justice from knowing the truth and instead hurting the innocent. Who authorizes the manipulation of the I Cedre? Because the forms were signed by some authority. Did they really verify the information they are in? Yeah, this case continues. And new details continues to come in. But this one that has been exposed by blogger Sipra Nyakundi is a masterpiece. Is a masterpiece. Is a masterpiece. On what really happened on the day that Monica Kemani was killed. And a lot of Kenyans are coming in with different explanations on, on what they think. And uh, on our final remarks to this video, remember right now we are at 28 minutes because we don't want it to go to one hour uh, because we were just reading the details of the year. I want to just uh, try, try and look at it in another perception. Was Joey Rongo fixed? And if he was fixed, why? These fresh details that have emerged on how government did a bogus investigation that saw the judiciary preferred death charges on Joey Rongo over Monica Kimani's death. According to an exclusive exposé that we have read by Cyprian Nyakundi, state witnesses on different occasions gave conflicting information such as wrong car number plates, Failure to produce CCTV footage to prove indeed Joey Rongo visited Monica Kimani's house and failure to reveal the identity of two individuals whose DNAs were found in the semen extracted from Monica Kimani's body. Also, witnesses were supposed to testify on behalf of Joey, including a doctor and a household belong and a house girl belonging to Jackie Maribe, died in mysterious manner. Who killed Monica Kimani and why? Because as we have always told you, the motive of Joey Irongo killing Monica Kimani has never been provided in court. Joey might be innocent. Why frame?
mkuu wa Kenya. I'm not saying that he is. All we are saying is that if information comes to light and new details comes to light in regards to a certain case, reviewing the evidence from the, uh, uh, let's say, even from, uh, from a journalist perspective of view, and finding that the, 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 the information given by witnesses contradict, then you will find, let me tell you, if you are at the scene of the crime and you are giving the real details of what happened at the place where you are, and the, the, we didn't come to ask about that, let's say, two years later, it's just two days or one day ago, you should be able to, to account for your movement, to account for, your, for every detail that happened that, na that day or that night. Now the question is, who killed Monica Kimani? And who is trying to fix Joey Rongo? Why give Joey Rongo a death sentence even though the, the witnesses' statements were contradicting? This is Janjalam Jini TV. All I can ask of you is to make sure that you subscribe. See you in the next video.